Welcome to Sidza.com. Calculating the energy of an electron in the Bohr's mode of an atom. In our last lesson, we learned some of the postulates of the Bohr's mode of an atom. And here in this lecture, we're going to discuss about the energy of electron in an atom. We know that Bohr, according to the Bohr, he says that atom contains a, a very small nucleus in the middle and there are, you know, the stationary orbits around it. Now, what is the energy of those orbits? When you have electron present in the first stationary orbit, what will be the energy of an electron in the first stationary orbit, the second, third, fourth? Energy of the electron in an orbit is basically the sum of the two energies, the kinetic energy of electron and the potential energies. So when you put the values here, these are the two energies. The total energy of an electron uh, in, a, in a particular orbit will be the kinetic energy and plus the you know this potential energy and when you you know substitute the values over here I'm not gonna you know derive this equation just have a look at these two equations this is the kinetic energy this is the potential energy of an electron and when you substitute these values when you simplify this equation we finally get this equation the energy of an electron will be negative 2 pi square k square m e4 uh, atomic number square n square you know h square and when you put the values for the constants over here like these and you know accept the atomic number of an atom and the uh, energy level the shell will you know the f this is the first you know uh, stationary orbit this is the second stationary orbit so n is the number of the you know the stationary orbit the third energy orbit the fourth energy orbit so when you put the you know uh, values over there we get this equation you know negative 2.178 times 10 power negative 18 atomic number square z square which is atomic number n square which is the the shell energy level right joule per atom and in terms of electron volts it is negative 13.6 so we're going to work on these two equations correct so these are the two most commonly used equations huh? okay so this is the energy associated with one atom for one mole it will be time is the Avogadro number right so if you substitute the values here you know if you take this value here which is for the one atom you times it by the Avogadro number one mole so you get this is the joule per mole this is the joule per atom over here and you know you further simplify this equation you get negative 1312 uh, z square n square kilojoules per mole all right and you will see that we're going to use these two equations this equation which is electron volt per atom and you know in terms of kilojoules per mole also these are two equations that we commonly use when we try to solve the equations you know in the uh, energy of an electron in different shells suppose we have here different shells and we want to calculate the energy of any shell right so you can use either this equation or you can use either this equation for example if you want to find the energy of the first orbit right for the hydrogen atom okay so this is the hydrogen atom and as we know we have learned that in our last lesson the Bohr's you know concept the Bohr's postulate they are these are applicable only for the single electron species atoms having only one electron that means it is applicable for the hydrogen so it's not applicable for the helium because helium has two electrons but if you if you remove the one electron from the helium you can you know uh, apply these concepts for the helium ion so Bohr's concept is applicable for the hydrogen it's applicable for the helium ion not the helium molecule it's also applicable for the lithium 2 positive ion lithium ion number two you're going to replace the two electrons so you will have a lithium two plus ion these are the single electron species and you know you can apply these postulates only for the single electron species so what will be the energy of the electron in the first orbit of the hydrogen atom that will be equal to negative 1312 atomic number is one so one square and n level is one one here so one square kilojoules per mole right kilojoules per mole so that will be equal to negative 1312 kilojoules per mole this is the energy of the you know uh, first shell in the hydrogen atom and in terms of electron volts it will be one square by one square so that will be equal to negative 13.6 electron volts per atom okay so you have to be again careful this is for the kilojoules for one mole and this is you know kilojoule you know electron volts per atom now let's you know use this particular equation electron volts per atom you can use the other one also but this you know let's work on this equation so if you want to calculate the energy levels different energy level what will be the energy of the first shell okay so the e1 for the hydrogen atom right so let's you know find it for the hydrogen atom see this is the hydrogen atom and you're gonna you know calculate the energy 
of the first shell of this you know hydrogen atom what will be that it will be negative 13.6 electron volts per atom because the atomic number is one and uh, you know the n value is also one here right this is our n1 this is our n2 this is our n3 and this is our n4 so what will be the energy of the second you know orbit the second orbit here what will be the energy the energy here will be that is you know 13.6 atomic number is one divided by two square right it is two square so it is negative 13.6 divided by two square that is four atomic number for the hydrogen is one so it will be 13.6 divided by four which is equal to three point you know that will be equal to minus 3.4 electron volts per atom okay this is the energy of the second orbit so let's you know write down these values suppose this is the n1 and this is the energy level first so what will be the energy of the first shell in terms of electron volts it is negative 13.6 electron volts okay per atom for the second energy level for e2 how much it was calculated we found that for the second energy level it is negative 3.4 electron volts per atom okay so let's go back here and let's calculate the energy of the third shell right let's calculate the energy of the third shell here what is that it is negative 13.6 divided by n square here the n is 3 right this is 3 square which is 9 so divided by 9 and you and when you substitute here the values so it will be you know 13.6 divided by 9 it will be equal to negative 1.511 electron volts per atom okay so let's you know put the same value here this is negative 1.511 electron volts per atom this is the energy now you know of the third shell n3 this is n2 here right this is the e3 okay so let's calculate the energy of the fourth shell how much is that it is negative 13.6 divided by 4 square right 4 square it is 16 so when you substitute the values it comes out to be negative 0 0.85 electron volts so it comes out to be negative 0 0.85 okay electron volts so similarly you can also find you know for the n5 n6 also so what do we observe you know when you put the values here what we find here we find as you go away from the nucleus you know you move across away from the nucleus hmm? okay you go away from the nucleus energy will it does it increase or the in you know does it increase or decrease you can see easily you know we have a 13 negative 13.6 and this is negative 3.4 which is higher this one or this one yes exactly this one is higher right minus 3.4 is higher than minus 13.6 so that means that you know the second energy level is higher than the first energy level right so the lowest energy is possible for the e1 correct so this is the lowest energy shell the first shell is the lowest energy shell so as you move away from the nucleus what we find the energy of the different orbits keeps on increasing okay so we can say that energy of the different shells it depends on the n value as the n value increases energy also increases the lowest energy is when you have e1 state correct and what will be the maximum value the maximum value for the for any energy level will be zero because you know if you put this value here if you put the n equal to infinity it will be zero that means it is the distance at which there is no attraction suppose you, we have electron very far away from the nucleus so, so if the distance is infinite distance right so what will be the energy of this electron here at the infinite position at infinite position the energy of this electron will be equal to negative 13.6 divided by infinity square so that you know that is zero okay so that means you know you can see here that the value keeps on increasing until it becomes zero so at infinite position it will be zero okay the highest value for the electron that means outside the atom okay when there's no attraction now let's calculate the energy gap the delta the energy difference huh the delta e here the delta e the energy difference between the two shells is e2 minus e e1 so that is minus 3.4 minus e1 which is 
negative 13.6 electron volts so the difference you know when you substitute the values here this is plus here and you know 13.6 minus 3.4 it will be equal to 10.2 electron volts so this is the energy difference between the two shells okay between the first shell and the second shell the difference is 10.2 electron volts so let's see what is the difference between the second and the third the energy level third is higher than the second so what is the difference the delta e over here is how much is the difference it will be minus 1.511 minus negative 3.4 so it will be equal to this is plus 3.4 minus 1.511 it is 1.889 so you can see here the energy difference decreases right between the first and second shell there is 10.2 electron volts difference the second and the third the difference is less only 1.289 electron volts difference right and the third and the fourth what is the difference here the difference is the e3 and the e4 the difference is how much it will be the delta e will be you know minus 0 0.85 and then plus 1.511 how much the difference will be it will be you know you can say it will be the difference will be 0 0.661 electron volt so what we observe here we find that as you move away from the nucleus the difference in the energy gaps keeps on decreasing the maximum difference is between the first and second and the difference is less than you know again lesser than here correct so that means as you move away from the nucleus the delta e keeps on decreasing right delta e you know it decreases it decreases here it decreases as the n value increases correct so when the n value increases the energy gap dec decreases so if you have an infinite position right so suppose you want to find out the energy difference between the first shell and the you know the infinite infinite position correct so what will be the difference suppose you want to find out the energy gap between the e1 and the uh, energy of the electron at infinite position when you have electron you know away from the nucleus you can say at infinite position so the energy of the electron at infinite position minus energy of the electron in the first shell how much will be the energy difference since we have calculated that the energy of the electron at infinite position is zero okay we have just seen that you know the energy of the electron at infinite position is zero so when you subtract it by the energy of the first shell right what is that that is you know negative 13.6 okay negative 13.6 so how much will be that the difference will be plus 13.6 okay that is the energy gap between the first shell and the infinite position now let's work on the ionization energy what does the ionization energy mean ionization energy we know that it is the energy that you require to remove the electron from an atom correct suppose we have a hydrogen atom it we know it contains one electron and if you want to remove the electron from the you know valence shell of the hydrogen atom and you you can convert it into H positive ion okay we have a hydrogen atom in the gaseous state and you want to remove the electron from the atom so you need some energy to remove this you know electron from an atom okay so to remove the electron from an atom in its gaseous state that is the ionization energy so if we have electron in the first shell in case of a hydrogen atom so how much will be the ionization energy so how much we require here the energy so that you can knock out this electron from the you know the influence of uh, the nucleus of the hydrogen atom as we know if you want to remove the electron from a particular shell from the first shell so the energy that you require will be equal to the delta e which is equal to you know e infinity energy of the electron at infinite position minus the energy of the electron in the first shell right because we want to remove the electron from the first shell so then uh, the energy of the electron at infinite position we know it is zero okay and it will be minus energy of the electron in the first shell we have just calculated it is negative 13.6 electron volts so therefore the ionization energy will be equal to plus 13.6 electron volts so basically it means that if you want to remove the electron from an from the hydrogen atom you have to supply 13.6 electron volts per atom only then the electron can be removed that means the ionization energy of the hydrogen atom is 
13.6. See, we have we can see that when you calculate the energy of an electron in a particular shell, it comes out to be negative 13.6, okay, electron volts. But when we talk about ionization energy, it is the same magnitude, but the sign is different. Only the difference is, you know, difference in sign. The energy of the electron in the first shell is negative 13.6. And the ionization energy is again 13.6. Why it is so? Why the energy is you know negative here? Basically, this negative negative value here, negative value of this you know electron in the first shell, it indicates the amount of attraction that is there between the electron and the nucleus. Correct? Electron and the nucleus. Suppose we have uh, you know a nucleus and the electron is very far away at infinite position, and when this electron starts coming closer. It comes close, close to the nucleus. What will happen? We know the attraction will develop when the electron comes from infinite position to the, you know, towards the nucleus. So attraction will be there. So when there is attraction, there is loss of energy. Okay, there is loss of energy, and you know this negative value here indicates basically the amount of attraction. We have an electron in the first shell, and how much is the loss of energy? Right? How much is the attraction actually there? That is 13.6. Okay, this 13.6 actually indicates the amount of, you know, that it, it tells us about the attraction there between the nucleus. Correct. So this is the energy that has been released. You can say when electron, you know, comes from infinite position to the first shell. When electron comes from infinite position to the first shell, it releases some energy due to the attraction. There is the loss of energy, and how much is the loss of energy? That will be 13.6. Okay. But since you know we say the loss of energy, that means it is the negative sign. Correct. So basically, this term, this negative sign in the electron, negative sign for the energy uh, of an electron in, ad, uh, in an atom, means that there is attraction, right? And attraction always stabilizes the system. So whenever there is more attraction, there is you know more loss of energy, correct? So negative sign indicates the loss of energy, right? And when you have to ionize it, that means you have to remove the, you have to take the same electron from the first shell up to the infinite position, correct? You have to take it back. So how much energy you need? Exactly the same amount, 13.6. But we write it in the plus sign. It comes up to be plus sign because now the process is endothermic. We have to supply the energy here, right? To take the electron away from the nucleus, we have to supply the energy. That's why the ionization energy will be the same as the energy of a particular shell. Suppose we have electron in the second shell of the hydrogen electron, you know, a hydrogen atom. For example, we have electron in the second shell of the hydrogen atom. How much we need to? You know what will be the ionization energy? How much energy we need to, you know, knock out this electron from the hydrogen atom if it is present in the second shell? Again, it will be equal to what? It will be equal to energy of the electron at infinite position minus energy of the electron in the second shell. And energy of the electron at infinite position is zero minus the E2 is we have calculated that it is negative 3.4 electron volts. So that it will be plus 3.4 electron volts. So therefore, the ionization energy of the electron in the set in the second shell, right, will be 3.4. That means if you want to remove the electron from the, you know, second shell of the hydrogen atom, if you want to take it to the infinite position, you want to knock out the electron from the second shell of the hydrogen atom completely from the, you know, away from the nucleus. So that means that means you have to supply 3.4 electron volts. Okay. Now, what will be the energy if you want to suppose? You know, excited from lower shell to the higher shell. Okay, suppose you want to, you want to excite it. You, you don't, you don't want to, you know, take it away from the nucleus. For example, you want to calculate the energy that you need so that you can excite electron from first shell to the second shell. So that means for the excitation process, correct? Exciting electron from lower shell to the higher shell. You can, you can do it from the third to the fourth, correct? Or second to the fourth. Or second to third. So suppose you want to find out the excitation energy, right? How much is the excitation energy? So excitation energy here can again you you can calculate it by the delta U, which is equal to suppose you want to calculate how much is the energy that you need to supply so that you can electro you can excite electron from the first shell to the second shell. Okay, you want to excite electron from n1 to n2 so what is the amount of energy that you need again it will be equal to e2 minus e1 the energy difference okay e2 minus e1 here 
So what is the energy of the second shell? For the hydrogen atom, it is negative 3.4. And E1, it is 13.6. So how much will be this? It will be minus 3.4 plus 13.6 so again that is how much it is 10.2 electron volts so that means if you want to excite electron from lower shell to the second shell you need 10.2 electron volts to excite electron from first shell to the second shell but if you want to completely ionize it if you want to remove it from the influence of the nucleus so you have to you can use this equation energy of electron at infinite position minus e1 Okay, and that will be you know exactly equal to the you know this uh, uh, shell value. Okay, the energy of the particular stationary shell. So hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.